Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yaradlah wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. So inshallah ta'ala, today we're going to continue uh, with our class for the sisters based on uh, the book Tambihat ala ahkam takhtasu bil mu'minat Rulings and regulations that are specific for the Muslim women Or for the believing women So inshallah uh, we had begun the chapter about Hifd al how the Muslim, how the believing women safeguard their private parts and their chastity and their dignity. And so we're dealing with issues, you know, under that heading. And so today we have uh, come to the section Min Asbab Hifd al Furuj, Man al Khalwa, Bain al Mar'ati wa Rajul al Ladi, Laysa Mahraman Laha. From the ways that the Muslim woman or the believing woman protects her private parts is that she avoids al-khalwa, right? She avoids al-khalwa, which is being in seclusion. A woman being in seclusion with a man who is not her mahram, meaning he is someone who she can marry. So it's like the woman is being, she's in a secluded place with a man who is not her father, not her brother, not her son, and so forth, right? Someone who she can marry, potentially. And so the, one of the ways that the Muslim woman safeguards her dignity and her chastity is that she avoids those kinds of situations, being in seclusion with a man who is not her mahram. So as Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, hafidhahullah ta'ala, he said, وَمِنْ أَسْبَابِ حِفْظِ الْفُرُوجِ مَنْعَ الْخَلْوَى بَيْنَ الْمَرْأَةِ وَالرَّجُلُ الَّذِي لَيْسَ مَحْرَمًا لَهَا From the ways and means that the believing woman safeguards herself and her chastity and her private parts is that she avoids being in seclusion with a man who is not her mahram. And he mentions the authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا يَخْلَوَنَّ بِيَمْرَأَةٍ لَيْسَ مَعَهَا ذُو مَحْرَمْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّ ثَالِثَهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said that whoever believes in Allah in the last day, then let him not put himself in seclusion with a woman unless there is a mahram there with them. Because if they don't do that, if it's just the man and the woman alone together, then the third of them is the shaitan. Right? If a man is in seclusion with a woman who is not his wife, not his sister, right? Not his mother, right? A woman that he can marry. He shouldn't be alone with her. He shouldn't be in seclusion with her. And if they do that, then the third person who is there with them is the shaitan. Uh, also, he mentions from Amr bin Rabi'ah, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, لا يخلونا رجل بمرأة لا تحل له فإن ثالثهما الشيطان إلا محرم That a man should not be in seclusion with a woman who is not halal for him, not permissible for him, putting the woman. Right? If it's just the man, if it's just the unrelated man and the unrelated woman, right? The third of them is the shaitan, unless she has her mahram with her. Uh, And he mentions, قَالَ الْمَجْدِ فِي الْمُنْتَقَى Right? He mentions that المجد, المجد he is referring to Abu al-Barakat, Majd al-Din, Ibn Taymiyyah. Right? That's not the Ibn Taymiyyah that you're used to. That's the, that's the, the grandfather of Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, he has a book called Al-Muntaqa uh, Fi Ahkam al-Shari'iyah Min Kalami Rabb al or something to this effect. Uh, Majd al-Din, Ibn Taymiyyah. He mentions that both of these ahadith are related in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. Uh, and that we have previously mentioned their meaning from Ibn Abbas in a hadith that is muttafaqun ali, a hadith that is agreed upon by al-Bukhari and Muslim. There's various narrations of this of this hadith that prohibits uh, the non-related man and woman from being alone together, and that's what we're going to be expounding upon today. 
right? So uh, he says, "Qal al Imam al Shawkani." Yeah, he mentions from al Imam Muhammad bin Ali al Shawkani, who was from the scholars of Yemen. He lived around the same time as Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah taala. He was in Yemen at the time. Al Imam al Shawkani, he says, "Wal Khalwatu bil Ajnabiyya majma' ala tahrimiha." The the issue of the non mahram man and woman being alone together, the scholars have all agreed that this is haram. Right? The scholars have all agreed that this is unlawful. Kama haka dalika al hafid fil fatih, as has been mentioned by al hafid in al fatih. Right? Abdi Karim, who is al hafid? Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, ahsant. Right? Ibn Hajar said that this, uh, this uh, consensus of the scholars has been mentioned in Al-Fatih uh, and وَعِلَّةَ التَّحْرِيمِ مَا فِي الْحَدِيثِ مِنْ كَوْنِ الشَّيْطَانِ ثَالِثُهُمَا and the reason why this is prohibited right? the reason why this is termed unlawful uh, in the hadith is that we find that because when the two when the man and the woman are alone together the man and the woman who are not related you know, by blood or by marriage if they're alone together then the third of them is the shaytan right وَحُذُورُهُ يُوْقِعْهُمَا فِي الْمَعْصِيَةِ And the presence of the shaytan among them will cause them to act in disobedience to Allah. Right? So when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, mentions that no, uh, uh, two, you know, no man and woman should be alone in seclusion together, it's because if they are in that situation, the shaytan will encourage them into doing what is haram. Right? And so this is why this situation has been prohibited in our religion. As for if the mahram is present along with the woman, then that seclusion is permissible. Because the presence of the mahram being there will prevent them from falling into disobedience. Right? So this doesn't mean what he's saying is that this is permissible. It doesn't mean that you make a regular habit of, you know, hanging out with brother so-and-so and it's okay because I, I got my father with me or, you know, my brother with me and we can still hang out and that's what we do, you know, on a weekly basis or whatever the case may be. It means that if you have to speak to someone like that in that situation, it is permissible to do that, uh, you know, in the presence of a, of a mahram, right? What's, what's a permissible situation in which a gathering like this may happen? When you're intending to marry a brother, right? If a sister is, is intending to marry a particular brother, right? They may have, you know, what we call, you know, a sit down, or, or they may have some issues they want to discuss with regards to the marriage. So she can meet with that brother, with, and she has her wali, or you know, whoever her mahram is, present with her, right, in the gathering, and the brother is there in that gathering, right? But it's not just like a regular, you know, we're just going to kick it, you know, type of gathering. It's you know, when there's a need for it. You can do it in this way. So that was the statement of Imam al-Shawkani. And Shaykh Saul al-Fawzan, he said, وَقَدْ يَتَسَاهَلْ بَعْضُ النِّسَاءِ وَأَوْلِيَاؤُهُنَّ بِأَنْوَاعِ مِلِ الْخَلْوَى He said, and some of the women, they have become uh, neglectful. The, some of the women and their awliya, their, their walis, have become neglectful with various types of khalwa, right? various types of seclusion. The first type that he mentions is خَلْوَةُ الْمَرْعَ مَعَ قَرِيبِ زَوْجِهَا وَكَشْفِ وَجْهِهَا عِنْدَهُ The first type of seclusion that some of the women and their walis have become neglectful of is when a woman is in seclusion with a, a close male uh, relative and she uncovers her face in his presence. وَهَذِهِ الْخَلْوَ أَعْذَمُ خَطْرًا مِنْ غَيْرِهَا and this type of khalwa, this type of seclusion, is a greater danger than the other types. And he mentions the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa where he said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالدُّخُولَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ Beware of entering upon the women. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ مِنْ الْأَنصَارِ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَفَرَأَيْتِ الْحَمُ right? One of the men from the Ansar, he asked, O Messenger of Allah, how do you feel about Al-Hamu? And we're going to explain what Al-Hamu is in a, in a minute, right? He asked the Messenger of Allah, how do you feel about Al-Hamu? The Messenger of Allah said, Al-Hamu al-Maut. He said, Al-Hamu is death, right? 
So Al Imam Al Tirmidhi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he explains Waqal wa ma'an al Hamu, Yuqal huwa akhu zawj. Imam Al Tirmidhi, he mentioned that the term Al Hamu in the Arabic language, it refers to the brother of the husband. Right? The Messenger of Allah is saying, the brother of the husband is death. Right? Meaning that the woman should not be in seclusion with her husband's brother. Right? Everybody with me? Right? She should not be in seclusion with her husband's brother. كَأَنَّهُ كَرَهَا أَنْ يَخْلُوا بِهَا And it is as if the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hated that a woman should be in seclusion with the, with the brother of her husband. So then, uh, Al-Hafidh ibn Hajar, he quotes from Al-Imam Al-Nawawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who said, اتفق أهل العلم باللغة على أن الأحماء أقارب الزوج المرأة كأبيه وعمه وأخيه وابن أخيه وابن عمه ونحوهم. So Al-Nawawi, he mentions that the scholars of the Arabic language they agree that al-ahma, right? Al-ahma is the plural of al-hamu. Uh, the 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 al-ahma, they are the close male relatives, right, of the husband of the woman. So the the close male relatives of the woman's husband, right. So that could be the the father of the husband, the uncle of the husband, the brother of the husband, the ibn akhihi, right, his nephew. Uh, uh, ibn Ammihi, his, his uncles, sons, and so forth. وَقَالَ أَيْضًا الْمُرَادُ فِي الْحَدِيثِ أَقَارِبِ الزَّوْجِ غَيْرُ آبَائِهِ وَأَبْنَائِهِ Also, Tirmidhi mentions what is meant by the hadith, though this is the general definition, right? What is meant by the hadith when the Messenger of Allah is saying is that Al-Hamu is death, it's referring to the, the close male relatives of, of, of her husband, but not her father's uh, uh, and and or not her husband's father and her husband's sons, right? Because those would be permissible for her. Because for them it would be permissible, right? For her to to be in their presence uh, uh, and to be in seclusion with them. La yusifuna bil Those are not the ones that are being described as death. قال وجرت العادة بالتساهل and then Al Imam Al Tirmidhi he says that the the customs of the people have become laxadaisical or neglectful with regards to this. فَيَخْلُو الْأَخْ بِأَمْرَأَةِ أَخِيهِ فَشُبِّهَا فَشَبَّهَا بِالْبِالْمَوْتِ So you'll find that the the brother of the husband will be alone with the woman, and this is the one who has been described as death. وَهُوَ أَوْلَى بِالْمَنَعِ and he is the one who is uh, been prohibited. Sure. We give you a minute. Okay. So everyone, everyone understands so far. So alhamu refers to the close male relatives of the husband, right? It doesn't mean that every hamu is haram, because for example, the husband's father is not haram, right? The husband may have, let's say the husband has sons from a previous marriage, they're not haram, but specifically the hadith is referring to the brother of the husband. That's what the Messenger of Allah meant when he said that al-hamu al-maut, that al-hamu is death. Uh, so then he mentions that Imam al-Shawkani again, rahimahullah, he said, قَوْلُهُ الْحَمُ الْمَوْتْ أَيْ الْخَوْفُ مِنْهُ أَكْثَرْ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ uh, Imam al-Shawkani says the reason why the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that the brother of the husband is death because the fear of falling into haram with him is greater than the fear of her falling into haram with somebody else. Right? Why is that? Because he's the brother of the husband, so he's naturally going to be closer, right, to her than you know some other guy on the street, for example, right. So that's why there's more danger in people falling into you know disobedience due to that. 
كما أن الخوف من الموت أكثر من الخوف من غيره. Right? Just as if something is going to cause you death, you'd be more afraid of that than something that is going to cause you less damage. Right? So for example, you may be turning some pages and you may be afraid to get a paper cut, but that fear is small compared to the fear of maybe getting into a car accident, which could potentially lead you to die. Right? You'd be more afraid of getting into a car accident than getting a paper cut. Right? There's fear for both, but one is much greater than the other. Right? And this is something, unfortunately, you know, in, in a lot of the Muslim countries, this is something that is, that is very, very common. May Allah wa ta'ala guide the Muslims, right? And it's, it's not just, you know, some of us, you know, we may come from non-Muslim families and we may think, well, my family is non-Muslim, that's why they're, they're all just open like this. But unfortunately, you know, some of us who come from Muslim families, we have the, you know, the same, the same issues, you know. When uh, when you go to Pakistan, for example, you know, except for those people who Allah wa Taala has guided, you know, culturally in Pakistan, the, the cousins, the males and the females, and the aunts and the uncles, everybody just hangs out together. No, no, you know, no covering, no nothing. This like you know, it's all we're all just cousins. It's all good, you know. And and you know, there's other Muslim countries where people are very neglectful of this. Allah wa Taala guide the Muslims. So that was that was one issue, right? Being in seclusion with the brother of the husband. The second one, تتساهل بعض النساء وأولياؤهن بركوب المرأة واحد واحدها في السيارة مع السائق غير محرم لها مع أن ذلك خلوة محرمة. Some of the women and their wellies, right, their guardians, have become neglectful with regards to the woman riding in a car. With a driver who is not mahram to her, this is also part of the khalwa, part of the seclusion that is haram, right? For a woman to be riding in a car with, and the driver is not someone who is mahram to her, right? The driver is not her husband or her son or her brother or anything like that, right? It's someone who is unrelated to her. Now, how would that work nowadays for a lot of women, or for whatever reason, take Ubers? No, so so that's that's an excellent question, right? I figured somebody was going to bring that up, uh, you know. So the brother asked for those who who didn't hear, how does this apply now to you know sisters who, for example, may be taking an Uber and so forth? And the answer is that you know it's it's the same thing. It's it's not permissible, you know. Whether whether she's taking an Uber, whether she's taking a taxi, whether she's taking a Lyft, and whatever other you know apps are out there, you know, if if she's in a car alone with a man who is not her mahram. This is not permissible, right? If she's in a car with another mahram and then the driver is not her mahram, that's permissible, right? So if she and her husband are taking an Uber together, right? And if, or if she and her, her son and her son is, you know, we'll, we'll get to the sons in a minute, inshallah. There's some explanation that's required there because I think some of the sisters take advantage of the issue of the, of the sons. And inshallah, we'll discuss that later. But generally speaking, she should have a mahram with her in that in that circumstance. That that's exactly what this is talking about, right? A woman being in a car with a driver who is not her mahram, right? And then he mentions from a sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh, Mufti al Bilad al Saudiya, right? Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh, who was the mufti, right? Meaning he was the the scholar who gave fatawa for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. He was the the original. Or the initial, I believe, first uh, mufti for the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, and then he succeed, or he was succeeded by uh, Sheikh Nubaz, rahimahullah, who was the mufti after that. Right? I'm just I'm mentioning these these little things about the scholars that were quoted from him, just so people understand. Right? So when you hear mufti Muhammad bin Ibrahim, you understand that this is an actual mufti, not to be confused with the mufti Minks and the mufti Munirs and all of the other fake, you know, muftis that are, that are out there nowadays. So Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim, he says, والآن لم يبقى شيء في أن ركوب المرأة الأجنبية مع صاحب السيارة منفردة بدون محرم يرافقها منكر ظاهر. He says, so now there is no doubt that for a, a woman to ride in a car with a, a man, or alone with a man who was not mahram for her, uh, and no mahram to accompany her in that, this is something that is clear and apparent evil. وَفِيهِ عِدَّةُ مَفَاسِدْ لَا يُسْتَهَانُ بِهَا سِوَاءً كَانَتَ الْمَرْأَةَ 
khafra aw baraza and there are a number of harms that cannot be neglected in this situation and those harms are there regardless if the woman is khafara or she is baraza khafara meaning she is a, a a younger uh you know respectful uh chaste woman baraza meaning she's an older uh you know chaste woman who speaks to men and so forth right whatever the case may be this is a situation that results in clear and apparent evil wa rajul alladhi yarda bi hadha li maharimihi dha'if al-din al naqis al-rajul qalil al-ghayra ala maharimihi right i want to make sure uh, in addition to the sisters that the brothers are all paying attention to this part right this is from Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim Al Sheikh, right? He's establishing that it is unlawful for a woman to be what alone in a car with a driver who is not her mahram, right? He says, and the man who is pleased with this for his wife, right? The man who lets his wife get into an Uber, you know, with a man who is not mahram, or the the husband who lets his wife get into a lift or a taxi or whatever with a driver alone with a driver who is not her mahram this individual is weak in his religion right he's deficient in his manhood right and he has no ghayra he has no sense of honor and protection and dignity for the women who are under his care right i want to make sure this is understood i'm going to repeat this right for the sisters as well as the brothers right the husband or the man who is pleased who's okay with his wife catching an uber right or catching a lift or a taxi and she's alone with a driver who's not her mahram this individual he's weak in his religion he's deficient in his manhood right take that however you want and he's a person who has very little sense of honor and dignity for the women who are under his care right no one should be allowing their wives into this situation if you're a man who is jealous of his wife and you care about your wife and you want to be you know qawwam you know you want to be the protector of your wife you would never allow your wife into such a situation now so nowadays uh, you have... uh, unless unless you're accompanying her in the uber that's different right we're talking about just letting her go on the uber by herself or go in the taxi by herself now so nowadays uh, you have Women that's doing the same thing as a, a business, as far as Uber or Lyft, and it's, it's, it's that applies to them even. And, and that's and that's that's the same thing. Jazakallah khair. The, the brother mentioned a good point. He said, well, "What about the women who are driving the Ubers as a business, or they're driving the Lyfts, or whatever the case may be? They would be in the same position. It's just that they're the driver now, right? So they're taking a passenger who is a man who is not related to them. They're falling into the same haram." Right? And that man is falling into the same haram. So what about public transport, like the bus? Now, so the, the, the bus is different, even though there are problems with, with the bus as well. Right? The brother asked about what about public transit, like the bus, or you could say the subway. You know, and I'm speaking as, as you know, a man who, who did take the, the bus and the subway for a good four years. You know, I have some experience in this. And the, the bus is a little bit different because in the bus... She's not necessarily alone with a mahram. There's a number of people on the bus. Even though in the bus, I guess technically, yeah, she might, depending on what time of the day she's traveling, she may find herself, you know, in a bus with just one individual or just the driver, uh, you know. But the buses generally and the subway generally are a little bit different in that it's public transportation. There's more people there. There's usually a mixture of men and women. But with the bus and the subway, there are other problems that come in, right? And they come in for the brothers as well as the sisters. Right? Like I said, I'm... I'm talking about this from experience. It's just I can't remember every time I would get on on the bus. It's like you know the women they would look for the Muslim looking guy. I'm gonna come and sit and rub up against him, and so forth, right? And then brothers would have to like get up and out of their seats just to avoid those kinds of situations, or you know brushing up against a woman or her hand touching yours on the on the handrail or something like that. And you have to kind of watch yourself on on the bus. You know, as a Muslim, you have to be kind of aware of those things because it's you know especially during rush hour, you know, in Toronto. It gets real bad, and uh, you know you have to really watch yourself. And I can't imagine a sister having to go through. I'm just I'm speaking as having gone through that as, as as a man and trying to avoid, you know, falling into any haram 
you know, it would be. Yeah, I think it would be even worse for a sister to have to go through that situation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our sisters. Tayyib. So, uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh, he says, Wa rukubuha ma'ahu fi sayyara ablagh min al khalwati biha fi baytin wa nahuihi. He says, and so for her to ride in a car with a man who is not her mahram, this is worse and more dangerous than her being in a house alone with a man. Right? Her riding in a car with a man is worse and more dangerous than her being alone with a man in a room or a house. He said, لِأَنَّهُ يَتَمَكَّنْ مِنَ الذِّهَابُ بِهَا حَيْثُ يَشَاءَ مِنَ الْبَلَدْ أَوْ خَارِجِ الْبَلَدْ تُوعًا مِنْهَا أَوْ كَرْهًا Right? Because once she's in the car and that man is driving, he can take her wherever he wants, inside the city, outside the city, whether she's going willingly or unwillingly, right? This is how being in, in, in khalwa, in seclusion inside a car, is more dangerous. Because at least in the house you're in one place, right? Even though that's still haram, but the car is worse because he can take you wherever he wants now, right? And how many instances have we seen of women being kidnapped like this and being trafficked like this and so forth? And this is something that is, that is clear and apparent for anyone that has two eyes, right? We see this happening all over the place. You know, young women being trafficked and so on and so forth. And so being in a car like this can uh, result in more harms or greater harms than the harms that would come of being in, a, in seclusion in a, in a stationary place. Right? Being in seclusion in the car would be worse than being in seclusion in a stationary place. Then a Sheikh Salil, that was the end of the statement of Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim. Then a Sheikh Salil Fawzan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, may Allah Ta'ala preserve and protect him, he says, وَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ الشَّخْصِ الَّذِي تَزُولُ بِهِ الْخَلْوَ كَبِيرًا فَلَا يَكْفِي وُجُودَ الطِّفِلِ Right, and this is another important point that comes up, and I hope everyone is listening. He says, so the individual who is removing the khalwa, right, the individual who is her mahram, in, uh, in that presence to remove the khalwa, to remove the seclusion, that person should be an adult, right? That person should be what? An adult, an adult right? He says, فَلَا يَكْفِي It's not enough for her to bring along a toddler, Right? Or a, a child. وَمَا تَظَنَّهُ بَعْضُ النِّسَاءِ أَنَّهَا إِذَا اسْتَصْحَبَتْ مَعَهَا طِفْلًا زالت الخلوة ظن خاطئ He says, so what some of the women think, that if they have their, their baby, their toddler, their child accompanying them, that this is enough to not be in khalwa, this is a view that is in error. Right? It's not enough just to have you know, a young child with you. The, the mahram that is with you should be an adult. Tayyib, he quotes from al Imam al Nawawi again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Who died 676 after the Hijra, the author of Riyadh al Salihin. Al Imam al Nawawi, he said, Wa amma idha khal al ajnabi bil ajnabiya min ghayri thalith ma'ahuma fa huwa haramun bil tifaq al ulama. He says, So as for when a non-related man is alone with a non-related woman and they don't have a third person, a mahram there with them, then this is haram. This is unlawful by consensus of the scholars. He says, وَكَذَا لَوْ كَانَ مَعَهُمَا مَنْ لَا يُسْتَحَى مِنْهُ لِصِغْرِهِ لَا تَزُولُ بِهِ الْخَلْوَى الْمُحَرَّمَةِ Likewise, if they have someone with them who is young, who is a child, that's not enough to remove the haram of them being in seclusion. Right. This was one of the one of the points that was mentioned. Uh, I believe Abu Uwais rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned this as one of the issues that the brothers had with Abu Muslimah back in the day, right? He gave a fatwa right from himself that the women they could travel, they could go on Hajj with their sons who were, you know, young children and, and so forth. And this is a position that is not supported by the ulama as we see from the kalam of Shaykh Salil Fawzan and the kalam of uh, Al Imam al Nawawi and others. Right, the the mahram who is with the woman, right, who is accompanying the woman, he has a responsibility and a role. 
He's the protector. He's the one who's looking after her, right? If your son is five years old, six years old, who is he looking after? You're looking after him, right? Some of our some of our brothers, may Allah wa ta'ala guide them, they may be 15, 16 years old and they still act like they're eight. And the women are really still looking after them, right? They may be adults in terms of their age, but in terms of their mentality, you know, they're still kids because they've been babied for too long or whatever. They don't understand their responsibility. Whoever you take as the mahram, they should be an adult and they should understand what that responsibility is and take it seriously, right? Your your child or your son is not an excuse for you to go and, you know, laugh it up and, you know, have conversations with men and then, you know, when brothers tell you, sister, you shouldn't be, you know, laughing and joking with the brothers like this. Oh, it's okay, my son was with me, right? That's not what you're, your son is not a license for you to fall into haram, right? If your son is with you and he's a mahram and you you have a need to say something to a brother, your son can say it on your behalf. You don't have to be talking to the brothers in that regard, right? Many sisters, they have a misunderstanding and they try to misuse this particular issue. Tayyib. What do we got? Number three? I think it's number three, right? Yeah. Of the situations that we mentioned. تَتَسَاهَلُ بَعْضِ النِّسَاءُ وَأَوْلِيَاءُهُنَّ بِدُخُولِ الْمَرْأَةِ عَلَى الطَّبِيبِ بِهُجَّةِ أَنَّهَا بحاجة إلى العلاج وهذا منكر عظيم وخطر كبير لا يجوز إقراره والسكوت عليه The next point that Sheikh uh, Saul Al-Fawzan mentions is some of the women and their guardians have become neglectful with regards to the woman entering on the doctor right? the woman visiting the doctor and they use the excuse that well she has to go to the doctor because she, she is seeking treatment for such and such, and that's why she's alone with the doctor, right? He says, this is munkarun adin. This is, again, this is a tremendous and great evil. <coughs> and it is khatarun kabir, that it is a, a great danger. And it is not permissible to allow this, and it's not permissible to remain silent about it, right? When we see something wrong, we have to say something, right? It's not permissible to accept this, it's not permissible to remain silent about this. To give some detail, he mentions from, again, a Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim, al Sheikh Rahimahullah. Who is he? He's the first Mufti of Saudi Arabia. First Mufti of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, right? He's a Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim, uh, al Sheikh. He says, وَعَلَى كُلِّ حَال فَالْخَلْوَةُ بِالْمَرْأَةِ الْأَجْنَبِيَّ مُحَرَّمَ شَرْعًا he says, so whatever the case may be, the woman being in seclusion with a man who is not her mahram, this is unlawful according to the Sharia of Islam, according to the law of Islam. Even if it is with the doctor who is treating her. And then he mentions a hadith. The hadith says, مَا خَلَى رَجُلْ بِإِمْرَأَةٍ إِلَّا كَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ ثَالِثُهُمَا The hadith says that uh, whoever... Uh, any man that is alone with a woman, uh, there is no man who is alone with a woman except that the shaitan is the third of them. Um, I wasn't able to find this exact wording of the hadith, but the hadith resembles other ahadith that are with the same meaning that are authentic. Allah wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, so, as Shaykh Muhammad bin Ibrahim, he says, فَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ حُذُورِ أَحَدٍ مَعَهُمَا So what she has to do when she has to go to the doctor because she's seeking treatment, and let's say she doesn't find a female doctor, she's only got a male doctor that she can go to, she has to have someone else present with her in the doctor's office, right? She should not be alone with the doctor. Regardless of whether that other person is her husband or you know, one of her male relatives who is mahram for her, right? she has to have somebody uh, present. فَإِن لَمْ يَتَهَيَّأْ فَلَوْ مِنْ أَقَارِبِهَا and Nisa. And even if she doesn't have any male relatives who can come with her, then at least she should grab one of her female relatives to come with her. Right? فَإِن لَمْ يُوجَدْ أَحَدْ مِمَّنْ ذُكِرَ وَكَانَ الْمَرْضُ خَطَرًا لَا يُمْكِنْ تَأْخِيرُهُ فَلَا أَقَلْ مِنْ حُضُورِ الْمُمَرِّضَ وَنَحْوِهِمَا وَنَحْوِهَا And if she does not have any of that either, right? She doesn't have any male relatives, she doesn't have any female relatives, she doesn't have a husband or anyone else to accompany her, then at the, at the very least, this is still, uh, and her, her situation 
is dire and she needs to go to the doctor and she cannot delay this visit to the doctor, then at the very least, she should have a nurse or someone else in the office present so it's not just her and the doctor alone. Tufadiyan min al khalwat al manhi anha. And this is to prevent any form of prohibited khalwa, any form of prohibited seclusion happening. Right? This was the statement of uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Ibrahim al Sheikh. And even now, even from the non Muslim perspective, in most cases, the doctor nowadays will have another person there anyway. They'll have a nurse there anyway, right? Why is that? Because the doctors have been accused of sexual harassment, sexual assault, and so on and so forth. So they're doing it to protect them, right? They're doing it so they have a witness to protect themselves from accusations of sexual assault or sexual harassment or anything of that nature, right? So even the disbelievers, they understand the, some of the harms that can result from being in seclusion, right? So how much more should the Muslims understand the importance of this? Because this is something that has been commanded of us by the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these, like we said before, these rules are not meant to, you know, just you know, come down on the sisters and to make the sisters' life difficult and so on and so forth. These are rules that have been placed by the Creator of the heavens and the earth to protect our sisters. Right? These are for the good treatment and the protection uh, and 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 the the honoring of our sisters. And that's how we should look at this. Taib. So then in Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he continues, and we don't have much longer to go. Inshallah, we'll, we'll close out this issue. I know we're going a bit lengthy today. Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he says, وَكَذَا لَا يَجُوزُ خَلْوَةُ الطَّبِيبِ بِالْمَرْأَةِ الْأَجْنَبِيَّ مِنْهَا Likewise, for the doctor himself, it is not permissible for the doctor to be alone with a woman who is uh, not mahram for him. سِوَا إِنْ كَانَتْ طَبِيبَ زَمِيلَ لَهُ أَوْ مُمَرِّضَ Regardless of whether that other woman is another doctor colleague of his, or that other woman is a nurse, right? Whatever the case may be, it's not permissible for him, right? Any Muslim who is in that profession, he should not be alone in seclusion with a woman who is not, uh, you know, related to him by marriage or through blood. ولا خلو المدرس الكفيف أو غيره بالطالبة. Also, it is not permissible for a teacher who is blind. To be alone with a female student. Right? I'll say that again. So the Sheikh said it's not permissible for a blind teacher to be alone with a female student. Now you have, so you have a male teacher who is blind. It's not permissible for him to be alone with a female student. Why is that? He's blind, right? So he can't do anything. Maybe touch. You have, touch. You, have, you have the hearing as well. Right? These are all things that will entice them to fall into haram. طيب ولا خلوة المرأة المضيفة بالطائرة مع الرجل الأجنبي منها Also, it is not permissible for a woman who is uh, an air hostess, right? The, the hostess is in the airplanes. Nowadays you have men to do that too. Uh, it's not permissible for the air hostess to be uh, secluded with a man who is not mahram for her. Right? I mean like on the plane somewhere. وَهَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ قَدْ تَسَاهَلَ فِيهَا النَّاسِ بِاسْمِ الْحَضَارَةِ الزَّائِفَةِ وَالتَّقْلِيدِ الْأَعْمَى لِلْكُفَّارِ And so these are affairs that you see some of the people, meaning some of the Muslims, they become neglectful of these issues because they fall into this, this false sense of civilization and you know, being modern and being you know, uh, worldly and so forth. And they fall into this because they want to blindly follow the disbelievers and the ways of the disbelievers. And because they don't pay any attention to the rules and regulations of the Sharia of Islam, right, to the law of Islam. So there is no might nor power except with Allah, the exalted, the magnificent. And so Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, he says, تجوز خلوة الرجل بالخادمة التي تخدم في بيته. Also, it is not permissible uh, for the man to be alone in the house with his female uh, maid. Right? For those of us who have maids, you know, you'll see this a lot in the Middle East. You don't really see it here unless you know people are super rich. I don't think anyone here has maids. Allahu a'lam. But this is this is a situation that comes in, right? And you've seen 
people who will, you know, run off with the maid or, you know, get involved in, in, in some zina with, with the maid. Right? A man should not be alone in the home with a female maid. وَلَا خَلْوَةُ الْمَرْأَةُ صَاحِبِ الْبَيْتِ بِالْخَادِمِ Nor should the female owner of the house be alone with a, uh, you know, what would you call it, a butler, right? The, the, the male maid, I guess, the butler, or the, the male servant. The, the, what would you say? Jeffrey. وَبُشْكِلَةُ الْخَدَمْ مُشْكِلَةُ الْخَاطِيرَ بِتَلَى بِهَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الزَّمَانِ And so this is a the, the problem that comes along with having servants. This is a dangerous problem that has affected many people in this time. بِسَبَبِ إِنْشِغَالِ nisa بِالْدِرَاسَاتِ وَالْأَعْمَالِ خَارِجِ الْبَيُوتِ And a lot of these problems come in when the women are preoccupied with uh, doing studies and doing jobs that are outside of the home. وَذَلِكَ مِمَّا يُوجَبُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ شِدَّةُ الْحَذَرِ And so this is why it is obligatory upon the believing men and the believing women to take the utmost caution with regards to these issues, these issues of seclusion. وَعَمَلُ الْإِحْتِيَاتَاتِ الْلَّازِمَةِ And that they should take all necessary Precautions against falling into seclusion like this. And they should not just go along with you know the evil customs that have become common. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows best. So the next section, inshaAllah Ta'ala, will leave off till next week. Uh, we'll stop here for today. Uh, if anything, if anyone has anything quick that we can answer, uh, inshaAllah we'll deal with it now. I know there's a couple of questions. From the sisters, inshallah, we'll make sure to bring those next week. But if there's nothing else, no. Yeah, so you spoke about earlier um, the um, the woman in the Mahra who lived their child's life. So what about with regards to there? Then there is a and I can't remember where where I heard the position from what meth have it is, but there's a position that women, as a, a woman, if she's looking to get married. If she's been married before, she does not have to have a wali or a wakil, and she can marry herself off. Yes, it's not permissible. There's, there's, there's the Hanafis that, 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 uh, that say that and, and do that. You know, the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا نكاح إلا بولي. There is no nikah except with a wali. So it doesn't matter if, she, if, if she's a virgin or if she's been married before, whatever the case may be, she has to have a wali in every case. And Allah wa ta'ala knows best. Khair, inshallah. So we'll stop here. Subhanakallahumma la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.